Hey everyone, Brendan here from VL Technology, and in today's video we're going to be showing you how to make a Python-based Discord bot. And this video is assuming that you already have your Python set up going. In a future video I will make some instructions for uh, setting up your IDE and all that. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So you're going to start by going to discord.com slash developers slash applications. Um, from here, you'll have to log in probably. Uh, maybe use a scan QR code of your phone, whatever. You're logged in, you'll go to the new application. And in here, we can enter our name. Let's just call it VL Technology, oops, Technology Test. That's going to be our application. We're going to agree, click Create. Uh, from here, this is just our test one, so it doesn't matter with the information here. But for this, you can add names, script. Anyway, what you'll do is you'll go to Bot. And you can bring your app to life with a Discord bot. Anyway, so build a bot. Um, you add a bot. You say yes. And we're going to call it VL Technology Test. And from here, you can do all kinds of goodies. But this is just the basics of it. We're not really going too far into it. And now, before we jump into the code, sorry, we're going to cover adding the bot to your server. So what you'll need to do is you'll still be in the developer's applications. You'll go into your selected app. Ours is the VL Technology Testbed. Uh, you'll click on OAuth2 URL generator. And we need to have an invite URL for it. So what you'll do is you'll select it. This is a bot. We just want the bot here. And we'll. I decided to just give it administrator permissions for uh, making it stupidly easy. Uh, for your bots in the future, you'll be selecting whatever stuff you gave the bot in the bot section. But basically, this way uh, is the URL we're going to need here. All right, so what you'll do is um, a, a pro tip here uh, when you're creating the permissions for your bot you definitely want to be as specific as possible if you're making a moderator bot you might want to just select administrator if you're making a music bot you might just want to select voice permissions or some um, read messages that sort of thing but always try to be follow the principle of least permission on this don't give your bot admin privileges if it doesn't need them anyway what you'll do is you'll copy the URL there and paste it into a new tab. All right, so I've gone ahead and done that. You copy that URL, you paste it into your new tab, uh, select your server from the dropdown, I'm doing it to VL Technology, press continue. Uh, it asks you, do you want to give those permissions of your thing? And we're just going to say yes, because this is our test bot, promise I'm a human, and authorize. Well, now let's check it out on the server side. All right, here we are on the server, VL Technology Discord server. Link in the description. You should join for a lot of fun and discussions. Anyway, you can see here, we've got VL Technology Test and bot next to the name. So we can see that our bot was successfully added to the server. Now let's keep moving forward. Let's give a quick summary of what we've done so far. Let's just make sure everyone's caught up. So uh, we've created the application VL Technology Tests, or whatever you call it. Basically, the application is what your bot uses to authenticate to the Discord servers, uh, the Discord API, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we've created the bot user. It's a user, so to speak, but it's, it's really a bot account instead of a user account. We're assuming you've already got a Discord server you want to add this to. But I have a video up, I believe, on how to create a Discord server if you want to use one just for testing bots, you know, that sort of thing. I think we're ready to start jumping into the code. Uh, all of this tutorial will be done using PyCharm Community Edition. It's free. I'll put a link in the description to download it. All right, so let's jump into the coding here. Now, you can see uh, I'm using PyCharm today. And all I've done is create a new project called VL Technology Testbot. 
practice using the new project dialog from uh, the file new project. And to get started, we need to do a couple of things here. All right, so I've gone ahead and filled in a little bit of code already, but we're going to ignore that for now because we've got to get our packages set up. So if you're on PyCharm, what you'll do is go to the Python Packages tab. And what we need, if this is your first time using PyCharm, or this is a brand new environment for you, you're not going to have most. You're going to have a few items, but not a lot of it. What you'll do is do in the search bar, search for discord.py. And you can see it's uh, this guy. I've already got it installed. But you'll need to press install on it. It'll be over in the corner like that. Uh, and that'll give us access to the um, uh, code we need to access Discord API. And actually be able to read messages and send messages and, you know, do all the bot things. Anyway, so once you've got that installed, it might take a bit, depending on how fast your computer is or how fast your internet is. Um, but once you've got that going, we can move forward. All right, so what we're going to do now is jump right into main.py. Uh, generally, if you're using Intel, or sorry, not IntelliJ, PyCharm, it will autofill this with some basic stuff. Uh, you can just exit all out, clear it all out. Uh, and here's what I've done so far. Here's your basics. You'll need Discord as your basics. Uh, this is the .env stuff. You can ignore all this because this is just my way of keeping my uh, bot secret token uh, out of the video and out of source control because you never want to put that up in GitHub or anything. But this is an easy way I can make sure the bot runs without putting it <laughs> out on the video and having to blur everything. But anyway, so what you'll do is you'll create a variable called bot token. You're going to set it equal to whatever your bot token is. So that could just be, you know, one, two, three, four, five, right? Whatever it actually is, you'll get it from the um, Discord developer page on your bot. Once you've done that, you can paste it in here for development purposes. And I'll do another video later on about how to actually use the environment stuff here. But anyway, you'll, what you'll do is a basic piece here. This is just a uh, quick sample to show the very basics. So client discord equals discord.client. Uh, you need to give it intents. And I just turned them all on for the purpose of this video for development, make it easier. So intents equals discord.intents.all. And you're going to use this annotation at client.event. Uh, we'll do an async def on ready. So this will basically say, when the bot is ready to go, what do we want it to do? And for me, I just said, oh, let's just make a print on there. It'll print in the console. And we'll just do a client.run with the token as a parameter or as an argument. And now you should just be able to press the run button up there. And you can see in our thing, bot is ready to go. Let's pull up the Discord. You can see VL Technology Test Bot is now online. But this isn't truly useful. We don't, <laughs> there's nothing we can really do with that uh, at the moment. So let's go ahead and comment that out and move on to the next piece. So we don't really care about that uh, as much as we necessarily should. Uh, here's the fun piece that we can do, though. Here's the piece you'll probably be most interested in. Uh, so, rather than doing a client, we are doing a bot. So, uh, again, with the intense discord.intense.all, um, basically just kind of lets you um, do anything. Uh, it just lets you do anything. You don't have to worry about it. You can always set them more specific later on. But, okay, so let's see. Bots. So you're going to create a variable called bot. Commands.bot. And commands is going to come from the discord.ext.commands package, which you might have to manually import, in which case it's just that line. It's pretty easy. Uh, so what you'll do now is, once you set the intents, you can also do a command underscore prefix equals. 
So if you've ever seen the Discord bots, um, everyone uses a different command prefix. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the exclamation point. So what you do is just say exclamation point, and that's the command prefix. So every, every command we have, say I wanted to generate a random number, when I'm in the chat, all I have to do is do exclamation point random number, or whatever our command is called. But that's how it knows that uh, you're trying to talk to the bot. So once you've set that up, and there's also ways to set multiple, I'll cover that in a future video as well. Uh, best way to do it, now you do at bot.command. In the parentheses for the setup, you'll do name equals whatever you'd like it to do. I've decided to make a random number generator because it's very easy to do. And whatever you set this name to is what the user will have to do, will have to call. Like I was saying earlier, uh, exclamation point random number. This is what I'll have to type in whenever I want this command to run. So what I've done here is just a quick random number generator. So async def, it's just an asynchronous function called random number is what we're setting to run when this command is called. You always include context, just the word context, CTX, whatever you want to call it. It's just the context of the app. Uh, and then if you want to do, uh, if you're expecting uh, arguments to be passed in like me, uh, for this, I want a minimum and a maximum range for my random number generator. So what I've done here is a minimum. I've called, created a variable called minimum. And what we're doing is kind of, uh, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's essentially typecasting. We're just saying, I want, I'm saying minimum is an integer and maximum is also an integer. And we're passing, we expect that to be passed in. So now we're in our function. You can, you can make this a one liner if you really want to, but I decided to make it easy. So I created a variable called response. Set it equal to random dot randint, minimum, maximum. And this is the part that Matt, where the magic happens, you'll do await context.send. This is your magic function here that will let the bot talk back in the chat. Now you can set this to whatever you want, whether it be text or numbers or that sort of thing. Uh, for us, obviously, we just want a random number. So I've done await context.send response. And what this will do is now generate the random number between the range given by the user put it in a variable called response, and now we're uh, awaiting the bot to send it back. So let's get a quick look and see what this looks like. Clear the console real quick. All right, now let's take a quick peek over at Discord again. All right, so we can see that VL Technology Test Bot is back online. So let's do random number. Let's do 1 and 100. And as you can see, the bot responded back perfectly. VL Technology Test Bot responded pretty quick. It's an 86. And that is the await context.send in action right there. And also to run it, never forget, you need bot.run bot token. Now let's talk about a little bit of error handling here because obviously uh, users mess up, I mess up, it happens. So let's do an exclamation point random number. And let's just give it one argument instead of two because it's expecting two and see what happens. Uh, as you can see, the bot never responded. Now let's find out why. So I can tell that there's a missing required argument error. And that's what's thrown here, and the bot will not respond. Well, obviously, that's a problem. We want the user to, to use our commands properly and know that there's been an error, at least. Whether we tell them exactly what to do or not, that's a different story. But let's go ahead and stop the bot, and let's fix it. So to fix it, we will use the at bot.event tag. We do an async def, or we're making an asynchronous function. I've called this, uh, we've got on command error. 
we've got context again that's important and we've got the error so this will be passed in or uh, this will pass in the context and the error so we can send a message with it and what I've done here is created a, just a quick if statement if is instance of error we pass in our error that we got and we're also using discords provided list here so we're gonna say is it a missing required argument error if yes what we want to do is await context.send please include the requirement arguments and try again all right so with our error handling now added let's go ahead kill it and rerun it all right we're logged in and running now pull up discord verify the bot is active yes it is let's put in our command again random number and let's pass in something that's not supposed to be there or just or sorry not enough arguments so in our case we've said please include the requirement arguments required arguments and try again and there you have it that's the bare bones basics of creating a discord bot now we're going to be creating a series on this where we build it out little by little and maybe add more features here and there and um that sort of thing but just to quickly recap on how to create this how to create your own commands beyond just this guy go ahead and shut it down let's take a quick look so what you'll need to do to create a new command of your own you'll do at bot dot command and now we need to give it a name you'll do at bot dot command and in the parentheses you'll do name equals whatever you'd like your command to be. Let's just say hello. I want my command to be hello because I want it to say hello to me. Then you'll go ahead and tap that enter key right there. Oops, sorry. I forgot name has got to be in quotes. Otherwise, Python gets mad. What you'll do now is to create an asynchronous function. So async def, uh, name of your function. I'm just going to mirror the uh, name of the bot command that creates it we're going to do that we always want to take in the context and any required arguments that we want uh, if we wanted to have a, another argument here i could say i want this to be uh, we'll create a variable called x don't do this ever because it's bad uh, and i want to say x is going to be of type string or i could say float or any other kind of magic like that you could do uh, but for this guy we don't really need one so we're going to go ahead and hit that colon enter and now we're going to take a quick look at this so i like to do this in two lines instead of one because i think it looks a little cleaner it's easier to understand what you do is create a variable called response or whatever you'd like. I use response because it's clear as to what it does. And now we can just do a uh, string where it'll say hello back or any other useful command you decide. The possibilities really are endless. And here's the other main piece. If you want to send information back, you do an await.context.send with your response. And from there, that's all there is to it. You can repeat that as many or as few times as you'd like. Just got to use unique command names. And from there, the bot will respond. Let's do a quick test, though, just to make sure. And there you have it. I'll be showing you how to create some more uh, in-depth commands later on. But thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.